Welcome to the Empress Marble tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to cover applying background texture with a rag, creating a network of veins with a swan feather, adding larger veins with a lettering brush, and finally glazing which will help create the layers that make up the marble. But on the table beside my board I've set out my brushes. I've got a 4 inch party for base coating, a radiator roller or a sausage roller with a medium pile sleeve, a bunch of t-shirt rags, a badger hair softener and a hog hair softener, some fitches of various sizes, a swan feather and a pointed lettering brush. I've also got my materials set out, some vinyl matte white, some flints matte emulsion glaze, my base coat, my tinted glaze and most importantly my bucket of water. So I'm going to go straight in and apply my base coat to my beautifully primed board. I'm using my 4 inch purdy. Purdy's have synthetic bristles that they can hold a lot of paint and it will give a smooth finish. But you could use any soft synthetic brush. The base coat that I'm using is 3 parts vinyl matte, 1 part water and 1 part matte emulsion glaze. I've made it thin enough so that it doesn't uh, give me a complete opaque coverage. And you see that I'm applying it with a little bit of water and not brushing in a specific direction. I'm varying it as I go. Now before the section that I've done is dry, I'm taking one of my rags, damp with a little bit of water and scumbling it over the surface. It should lift up some of the paint and you'll see the sort of white background come through. Work this technique over the whole of the board and work in a general direction and it should give you a graphic finish when it's dry. Once that's dry, you can begin to add the network of veins of the swan feather. On my uh, paint lead palette, I've got little splodges of the base coat, the tinted glaze and some white paint. And I'm going to rough, roughly mix the three together with a feather. Don't mix them well as you want the veins colour to sort of come and go as you apply it. I'm using the feather in one general direction and bridging out to each side. As you see, because I've not mixed it completely, I'm getting a little bit of variety as I sort of push the feather on the board. As I go, I'm softening. And you can see the bottom right, I'm using a badger hair softener. Very soft and perfect to blur those veins slightly. Alternatively, you could use a hog hair softener, which is a little tougher. If you don't have a softener on you, you can also use a nice new soft brush. Now I'm going to keep going until I, I've created a good network of veins. And these are going to sit nice under the, under the glaze and more prominent veins later on. As you can see, I'm constantly recharging my, my feather, adding a little bit of water if it's a bit thick. And you use it, you just sort of comb it, it's almost like combing over the surface. And it creates these nice para, parallel lines. Marble started as limestone. It was put under such extreme temperatures, it went molten. The veins are the sediment and impurities that settled throughout the stone. That's why you get the smaller veins as we're trying to achieve here and then the larger like cracks, larger veins that we're putting into the piece later on. You get so many different types of marble because all around the world the limestone is subject to varying temperatures. The colours are also due to the temperature and the environment around the limestone as it transformed. Once that's dry, I'm going to use my rag and my sash brush to apply a tinted glaze over the top of the veins. The glaze is one part Roscoe super saturated five parts matte emulsion glaze and three parts water. This should be fairly translucent and is used to knock back those veins and tie the whole piece together in with the base. I'm also using my sash brush to apply the areas before softening with, with a rag. This sash brush is a bit of a personal favourite. It's got nice stiff bristles that form a point so it's really great for creating a good variety of marks. I'm using it in the same direction that the veins are going and I'll probably cover 80% of the area, leaving some gaps here and there. I 
and again I can sort of combine the sash brush marks with the, the sort of more graphic rag mark and you can even soften these if you if maybe some are a bit too strong Now I'm going to add the more prominent veins. I'm using this uh, synthetic pointed lettering brush. It's a number four size. It's got a nice long handle, which is good for getting some distance from the board. It's got long bristles so I can create delicate marks, but also get some more strong graphic ones. I really like brushes that do a give you a variety of marks. I'm back on the palette lid and I'm mixing some white with a little bit of my tinted glaze. And again, not mixing fully. What I'm doing with my brush right now is uh, called palleting the brush. So it's making sure I get a lot of paint on the brush so it flows really nicely. I'm working in the same direction that, that I've been going in and I start by following some of the shapes that I can see. I start with a thin line by lightly touching the board with the tip of the brush in a quick smooth motion. I then go over with chunkier veins. To do this I press the brush in and spread the bristles to get a bigger marks. Your paint should be thin enough to flow, that's why the bucket of water is your best friend and keep recharging and palleting your brush every so often. When you're painting the veins, it's good practice to have a couple of references handy. The veins don't run completely parallel to each other. Marble isn't formed at 45 degree angles, the best cuts are quarried that way. And that's the form we're most likely to view it in city chambers or galleries and museums. But remember it's still a piece of natural stone. Not every tile or slab will be uniform. I'm also adding some thin veins that run almost perpendicular to the larger veins. My lines aren't solid. If you imagine Morse codes, I tend to break them up in a dot dash style. This is when I start to get a little bit bolder, add those chunkier veins in. Finally, I'm going to give it a matte glaze to seal the work and also help deepen the colour. If I wanted that polished marble feel, I would maybe, after this was dry, maybe give it a layer of Bone Omega gloss glaze to give it that high gloss sheen. But with this matte glaze coat, it's protected and I can still have the option to maybe spray into it or maybe add some more veins. I'm using my radiator roller to apply and I'm just ragging off sections to vary the sheen level here and there. So a quick recap, we've covered applying the base coat and creating a texture with a rag, using a feather to create background veins, using a tinted glaze to knock back veins and other layers, and veining with a lettering brush. This is to give you the sense of some of the steps you could use to create full marble. Try them out for yourself, all of these are transferable, but you might discover something that works better for you. If you do, let me know.